Hello and welcome back everyone to episode 5, I believe, of the Lonely Man podcast. Today we're doing something fun again. Uh, there's an ambulance outside, it's not for me. Uh, today we're doing something fun. We're doing something suggested by Rimmel, Ready Made Lobotomy, who has commented on a couple of these videos. Uh, and she suggested I try some beers. Uh, so today we're going to try three. Normally, I think I'm going to keep this maybe like an episode thing that I keep doing, but I'm going to try, let's move this mic a little bit, uh, there it was, um, I'm going to do maybe one an episode, but because it's the first one, we're going to go big, we're going to have a fun time, and we're going to just have a laugh with it. I'm formally dressed because I finished work today, and this seems like a nice way to end work as well. So, we will go in order of probably known. So, first one... If you can hear the jingle jangling, you can hear the jingle jangling, is a Peroni. Peroni Nasdur Azura, which is an Italian beer. Uh, it's very nice. I like Peroni anyway. Let's see if we can say a little bit more about Peroni. It has words on the back. It's a good beer. Let's try it. I've got things to make this really professional as well. So first off, I'm using my keys because I'm a professional. But listen to this, wait. Let's see if we can get the sound on the audio. That was a really weak... Uh, then, we're going to show off the colour, because I'm an actual professional. Let's pour a little bit into here. Lovely. Let's have a look at that. Beautiful, very, um, very clear. Not a lot of colour there, I'd say. It's quite a light yellow. Very fragrant. <laughs> this is such a dumb thing. Very fragrant. It actually does have such a defined smell, though. That sounds like I'm taking the piss. But I generally think Peroni has quite a nice smell. Overall, quite nice. Peroni's got quite a nice, um, strong aftertaste. Um, but, like, a very fresh flavour. Um, I think... It's a wheat bit? No, it's not. It's hops. Italian maize and hops and barley malt. So now, the only way we can continue to do this podcast uh, is by now I drink all of this. So we're going to speed this up because it'll take a hot second, I imagine. So. That was so much... <laughs> I'm going to burp. I'm so sorry. I didn't think you heard it. Oh, okay. Whew. This is dot bode well. I've got another two here. Let's, let's also read out the percentages. This is 1.7 units. Uh, what percent is Peroni? Um, I can't, oh, 5.1%, okay. I wonder if we're going in a descending, oh, I'm so full now. I, sh I ate before this as well. It was such a rogue decision. Oh, okay. Let's take a second to talk about Peroni more. <laughs> Christ, okay. So Peroni <laughs> comes in a, a very nice green bottle. <laughs> so done. Oh, I'm so fucking done. There's a motorbike outside. It's so hot in here. And I'm just chugging beers. Okay. Next one. Uh, are we actually going into sending alcohol content? Is that a... Uh, what's this? Uh, no, we should have gone with this one if we were going alcohol content. So this is a Sahi, which is a Japanese, I think. Um... Yes, Vision of Japan. So it says, Asahi Super Dry is brewed with precision to very high quality standards under the supervision of J Japanese master brewers. Our advanced brewing technology techniques deliver dry, crisp taste, a quick, clean finish. We call it Karachi taste. And it even says here how you're supposed to say that. Karakuchu. 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 I'm bad at languages. So again, I'm going to open this. I'm going to try and open it a bit more firmly by the mic. That was a bit nicer. Lovely. Um, 
So again, we'll go through the same steps real slow this time because... Oh, okay. So... Oh, we don't smell it now. We pour it first. Oh. It's fine. Looking like a similar colour to the Peroni. If I'm going to be honest, I... I don't... You can see my ring light in the background. <laughs> I don't distinguish. I think it's maybe a smidge darker, but I don't think you can see that on camera. Very different smell. It could also be that I can still smell the Peroni. <laughs> Multiple glasses would have been good for this. I can't smell anything. I've got a huge nose, don't I? <laughs> really gets in there. I promise you, one beer hasn't just absolutely ruined me. <laughs> Let's talk about this beer a bit more so I don't have to drug it so quickly. Um, so we've read it all, of course. Uh, it's a 5.2, so it's actually 1% stronger. Um, same u units in the UK, though. So I don't, if you don't know what units are, it's our measure of like how much alcohol is in something. So, I mean, I'm going to have to look this up a little bit because I think I'm right. Um... What are alcohol units? They're like the UK measure, though, of alcohol, basically. One unit is equal to 10 mil or 8 grams of pure alcohol. There you go. So that means in each of these bottles, this one has 10 mil and maybe, well, it's like 10.7, 17 mil of pure alcohol in here. Because if one, one unit is 10 mil, yeah, 17 mil of alcohol in here. So it's it's a way of determining how strong a drink is without looking at volume, because volume is another way of determining it. Admittedly, this clearly isn't as accurate because these are both the same units. Like this is a this is a 1.7 and this is a 1.7, but this one is slightly stronger by 0.1% of vol. Very interesting. Um, <laughs> I don't want to do this. There's a lot of stalling, isn't there? There's like five minutes of stalling, okay. Ooh. Very neutral taste. Very dry. They were right. They said dry on the bottle. It's very dry. It's very good, though. Um, I may be able to chug this one a little bit more proficiently. Um, again, I'm going to stall it out a little bit. Because um, <laughs> I'm dumb. Um... Oh, just stretch a little bit, prepare myself for this. I hate chugging out of a bottle because there's no air that gets in there. Um, okay, right. So it's very dry, very nice tasting, um, very f almost like almost tastes flat um, rather than like bubbly because of how dry it is. So again, I'm gonna finish this. Let's speed this up a little bit. I just want to say right now though, we are never doing three again. <laughs> this was such a cut off idea. So let's speed up the clip. Slow down the clip. Slow it down. Okay, we're back again. It's not done. Um, I just want to talk a bit more. Definitely not because I'm trying to stall. Um, tastes great. Tastes, it's a superb flavor. Um, the Japanese, 100%. Let's put the Japanese flag right here. Here, bam, Japan. They've done great. Let's also, let's represent the Italians as well. Let's put the Italian flag right here. Bam, Italians as well. We've got two, three different countries, though, I'm pretty sure. Definitely three different countries. Oh, my God. Okay. Um, so, yeah, those are the flags. Uh, I'll stand in the middle. There's an Italian here and J Japanese flag here. Great flags. Um, let's talk more about the flags for a second. So, like, they're on material. Okay, let's go. Speed up the clip. Slow down the clip again. Okay. Oh, we went way strong into that first one, and we've really slowed down here. <sighs> anyway, so I quite like beer. It's not um, it's not my go-to. Uh, well, it depends actually. Beer is such a scenario-specific drink for me. If I'm out in a beer garden, beer gestured already there. If I'm out in a beer garden and it's sunny and you're just chilling and you're having a good time. 
beer is fine because you can just slowly sip on it, not like what I'm doing right now, and you can just have a good time. On the other hand, if you're trying to get drunk, beer is too much volume for the low amount of alcohol, and it's so, so bubbly. It's in my stomach, and I am dying. Um... And to talk about my life a little bit while we also continue to stall. So as I said, I came home from work. I'm dressed formally. I have a job again. Well, I had a job. I was working at a cinema. I'm now working at a storage company. Um, so I'm having a good time there. I have to dress up a bit fancier though, because I'm a sales consultant. So I'm selling things uh, and people should look good when they sell things. Um, this is not a good look, but it's fine because they won't see me like this. Um, I am quite enjoying it. It's a little, a little dull, obviously, because it's not like a, like a super fascinating job, but it's, it's definitely like a good fun. The guys there are good fun. And, um, so far I've done a couple days there and it's, it's all right. You know, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. I'm quite enjoying it. Oh my God, there's still so much beer there. Um, continue to stall. So yeah, I've started that though. It's taking up a little bit more of my time. I'm now on a 40 hour contract, so I'm working quite a lot. Um, but I'm still making time. I mean, it's Tuesday today and I'm filming this. It's actually seven o'clock on a Tuesday, or like almost eight o'clock on a Tuesday. Um, and I'm filming this. I've got the a couple days off this week, so I'm going to have to film more Minecraft content. Um, but that's going really well. I'm really happy with the progress that the, the two videos that are out right now are making. I don't think the second one's done as well for some reason, but um, I'm going to try and really help boost it up uh, and promote it a bit more today. Um, I'm just rocking like mad to try and, I don't know, move more of this alcohol down through me. Um, so yeah, it's going really well so far. Um, life's just getting a bit busier, but I don't think that'll stop my schedule. I'm still on track for, I think, Saturday, Sunday. Let's have a quick look. Let's make sure that I'm still doing good for track. So content wise, we've still got three videos in the pipeline for the 17th, 19th, and 21st. So we're still on track for some some good uploads um, and it's all it's all gonna chug along quite nicely. So I think we're, we're gonna keep up this time because a lot of the times I've started uh, doing the YouTubes, uh, I have said that I will do something and I have struggled to keep up with that. This time, on the other hand, I have said it and I am following through, which is nice. Oh, okay. Let's roll, let's, let's do the thing. Ollie, go. <laughs> Slow the clip down. Oh my god, so much, so much gas. It's too much. Three is too much. And I know the next one's gassy. Ugh. And it's too hot. Um, anyway, podcasting. Let's podcast for a bit. We'll come back to that third bit. Christ. <sighs> so London is uh, not coming out of lockdown straight away. I think we've had our, our restrictions moved. Um, so we'll, I've been doing some things, to be fair. I actually went to, the other day... A virtual reality uh, bar place thing they served alcohol but it was basically um, I went with my girlfriend we went in and it was basically what it is is man these drinks are really kicking in though heavy at this point um, <laughs> I'm just hot now um, you go <laughs> you go to this place I think it was called other world and you go in and they go they explain it to you and they give you the HTC Vive um, and you go into these pods, like everyone gets their own room and it's got vibrating floors, air conditioning to blow on your back when like you're in a cold area. So, sorry, the beer. Um, so cool. It was really good fun. We played um, like a tennis sort of game that like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. You hit the ball and it will just like sling across the room, but it's a 360 room, so you gotta follow it and like smack it around. It was really good fun. I played the game called Super Hot, which is on PC, uh, where basically like, if you move, time moves. So someone could fire a bullet at you, and if you stay dead still, you just don't, like the bullet just goes like, doesn't move, and then you can move and dodge it. Very cool game. Uh, we played a, a zombie game that was exactly like COD Zombies, 
and it was so much fun. I want to go back there at some point, see if I can get them to film what I do, like through the goggles, and I want to put a video together hopefully from that, but I don't know if that's possible. Uh, we also played a similar game to the zombies one, but it was robots, um, which was much more um, uh, easy to deal with emotionally for my girlfriend, who did struggle a little bit with the idea of all the zombies, which is fair enough. It was, it's very real. Uh, you're, you're in there and like, I punched the wall a couple times, in fact, while playing super hot, because you just get so intense and I was just wailing around. Um, but it was really good fun. The like floor vibrates if you're doing anything that's like, uh, and then if you're in like a colder zone, you get like the wind on your back, which is super cool. It gives you a really 4D experience. For the whole thing. Um, I would totally recommend it to anyone who hasn't ever tried virtual reality. I've tried it before. I've done a virtual reality roller coaster because my uni used to have one, which was good fun. Um, but if you haven't tried it, it's so much fun. And then you earn coins while you're in there, right? So we earned, I think, 6,000 between us. And every thousand coins was a pound off when you tried to spend uh, at the bar. So we got like I think a drink and a half free, basically, which is pretty good, considering we just went in and played the games. Um, I won, because I'm a absolute machine at games. I keep looking at this other beer. It's not good. Um, <laughs> uh, but it was really good fun. So I've done that. I'm starting to do a couple more things. I think I'm going to go to a mini golf place at some point as well soon as like lockdown slowly eases. I mean, the main thing that I think is just being pushed back is they're just like, we don't want you clubbing right now, which is kind of understandable because when you're clubbing, you're just like in a room full of people and it would get so hot if you had to wear a mask in there. So I think they're just holding that back for now. Um, but it's uh, it's been a good week so far for me. I've done a good couple things. Uh, I've, I've been to see friends, had some pims. Can't go wrong with pims. And it hits hard because it's so tasty and you don't realise. And then you wake up the next morning and you're like, Ugh, my brain. Just like, probably I will tomorrow. Fun fact, I have to get up at 6 o'clock in the morning because <laughs> I have to start work at like 7.30. So doing this is a poor idea. But if I don't do it, I won't have a podcast for you tomorrow, which is today that you're watching it. Because I'm a bad person and I'm trying to stick to this and I love it, to be fair. Do you know what? We're going to just take a moment to talk about this. I'm really loving this. It's so fun for me and it's so, um, it's just so amazing. I'm really enjoying doing it. The schedule is, it's a little tough to keep up with because like, I'm just not used to recording constantly. Go away, ambulance. Um, I'm not used to recording constantly, but I'm getting there and I'm really enjoying it. So if you ca if you do want to support me in any way at all, just go through and watch my videos in its entirety. Because currently what I'd like to do is I'd really like to bump up my public watch hours so that I can get myself to the point of um, monetized so then I can make money from this. So when I invest dumb money into beer, I can get some of that back. So if you really want to support me right now, the best way you can support me and to really encourage me to keep going, um, even though I will, I will keep going, I love it. Um, the best way to do that is to um, tell your friends, get people to come and watch as well, get them to watch in their entirety, <laughs> and then also get them to subscribe. Because currently, I'll tell you where we are statistics wise for monetization. We are at 36 subscribers out of the 1,000 needed, and we're at 20 public watch hours out of the 4,000 needed. So we need a little bit more uh, of people watching. So all of my videos currently going out are around that half an hour mark. So I'm really hoping with that like big boost in like high um, volume content, I can slowly start to push that number up. I just need that real engagement. Um, personally, everyone seems to love these videos. I get a solid like, I think my average engagement, sorry again, Christ, these beers are really doing me in. I think my average engagement for um, the podcasts are around about 10 minutes right now, which is really good. So like eight people watching, that's 80 minutes of engagement time on average. So that's another hour and almost a half, which is great. Um, it's going to be a bit slow doing it like that. Um, but hopefully as I go, more and more people will start to watch more and more people will start to watch more and then it will get a bit quicker and quicker and as we go we should hopefully cycle through that quite nicely 
Um, we're going to start talking about the other beer now because we're at the 21 minute mark and I do need to try and hit this around the 30 minute mark. And with how slow I've been with drinking the last one, I need the nine minutes, I feel. So, last one, Hogarden. Oh, Hogarden, which is a Belgian... Belgian flag? Wait, Belgian flag? <laughs> I'm so bad with the pointing. It's a Belgian wheat beer. So it's not made with like barley or um, what's the other ingredient again? Barley or like hops. It's made with wheat. So, oh, they've got instructions on how to actually, um, how to drink this. It says one, chill. Two, pour two thirds of it into a cup. Two thirds. Three, swirl the rest of it. Four, top off and enjoy. So normally with this beer, you would put a slice of like orange in there, just like Blue Moon, um, which we will try at some point. So let's get another satisfying um, bottle open. Again, you can hear my keys, I'm sorry. That was a tasty one. Uh, and then let's pour it out into the, the ceremonial glass. Just a little bit. So this is actually very murky, like it's very cloudy is the word I think that people would use. You can't really see much through it. Like if I put it in front of my face, you can just about see me, but it's very cloudy in comparison to the other two, um, which is a interesting note. I've actually had Ho Garden before. Uh, the only one I've not never tried out of these three is Asahi. So let's give it a sniff. This glass is so tainted. I can't smell anything different anymore. I should have got three different glasses, but I will try. Okay, so I can actually smell the Hogarden because I know what it smells like. I almost want to describe it as like I'm taking in so much air uh, and just not air, it's just fucking beer, beer air. Um, <laughs> oh, this episode's so, so trash. <laughs> It's gone downhill quick. I hope you enjoy this, whoever's watching up to this point, because this episode's gone downhill quick. It's a very strong, defined smell. It's not a smell I could describe. <laughs> let's get real, let's get that real audio in there. Yeah, that's a, that's a good sniff. Um, yeah, it's a smell I couldn't describe. Tastes very good with orange in it. We're going to just have a sip of this one. Because <laughs> we've learnt our lesson a little bit. There's no sipping here. So again, the flavour is not as strong. The strongest flavour probably out of this is the Peroni. The aftertaste on the Ho Garden is actually really nice. It's sort of... um mellow it definitely leans towards a citrusy taste which is why an orange like wedge complements it so much um i've never chugged one of these you're supposed to drink this between two to three degrees it's 4.9 percent just to add that in and again if i give you the uk units it's 1.6 units in here and i'll read you the back actually quickly almost 600 years ago in the belgian village of hogarden a band of monks experimented by adding oddball botanicals from halfway around the world to their traditional wheat beer. Our recipe inspired by their creation is a beer with a refreshing flavour and captivating aroma unlike any in the world. You might call it divine inspiration, we call it Hogarden. That's so interesting. So monks, which I know monks used to brew wines and all sorts of um, beers, they brewed a beer using botanicals and then they've taken inspiration from it. What's in this then? Water, barley, malt, wheat, hops, spices, coriander seeds, natural orange peel. See, that's the orangey taste. Sugar and yeast. Ah, you know what? You learn something new every day, especially as an alcoholic when you forget everything the day after. It even says naturally cloudy. I read that. I did I did the thing right. I told you it was cloudy. Uh, and it just says it's got coriander and orange peel in. So if you want to know what this tastes like, imagine coriander and orange peel with a bit of water in your mouth. 
you're done. Um, no, but seriously, I recommend any of these beers to anyone. I don't think I'll drink any beers right now that I wouldn't recommend. I'm going to try and drink some of the more um, easy to come by. And by that, I mean any beers that my corner shop sell. Um, it's 26 minutes. I've got to be a bit quick with this. I've stalled too much now. So, again, let's speed up the clip. Slow it down. Slow it way down. It's so bubbly. We might not finish this by the end of the episode. We've got about three minutes to clear this. And I'll tell you right now, it's not... We're going to take a step back from this. It's not promising. Um, I ate too much, apparently, beforehand. And then... <laughs> I ate a big slice of cake when I came home because I made a cake with uh, with my girlfriend and we will see that cake here. I made this cake. It's a traditional sponge cake with a little bit of jam in it and a lot of strawberries. I had a big slice of that when I came home um, and then I had a hot dog and now I'm very full. Um, and I'm looking at the time and I'm watching it tick up and I'm looking at this beer and I'm looking at the time and I'm thinking, oh God, this has got to happen now. <laughs> But I don't want it to. Um, let's just keep sipping. We won't speed this up. Oh my god, this video is not going to be 30 minutes, is it? Because of all the speed ups. i got time to kill, don't I? i got time to kill. We're going to drink this beer real slow and we're just going to natter. Like we normally do, but without beer. Christ. So one beer an episode now. It's confirmed. There's never going to be... We might do episodes without beer, but it's one beer only. <laughs> I will not do more. I could be persuaded if we hit a milestone. So many ambulances. I'm so sorry. Um, I could be persuaded if we hit a milestone. Like, if we hit 100 fo uh, subscribers, I could be persuaded to do another multi-beer episode. But my god, this podcast is hard to do with three beers in front of you, trying to neck them all. Um, but yeah, I could be persuaded. I could be persuaded. I feel like my complexion's gotten redder and redder as this, as this podcast has gone on, because it's so hot. And I wouldn't have had my window open, and you wouldn't have heard the ambulances if it wasn't that hot, but it's boiling. Oh my god, let's sit up, because maybe that will help the beer situation. We're just dying inside. For anyone who is an audio listener, who has just, like, put this on in their car or something, death is coming for me. I'm boiling hot, I'm red, uh, and <laughs> the beer is killing me off. Um, welcome, audio listeners. We're at the, around the 30-minute mark now. I can see it coming. But with the speed-ups, we don't need to worry about that. I've sped up, like, what, multiple times. I did the first beer so quick. Um, and now these other beers are just doing me in. I'm rocking back and forth like I'm terrified. Um, another ambulance. Man, I, I'm hoping everyone's alright out there. Um, it's like the purge or something. Um, what was I going to say? I'm actually going to go to see a film uh, tomorrow, on Wednesday. Wednesday, which is why I can't actually film this tomorrow after work. I'm, doing a, I'm going to see a film. I'm going to see The Hitman's Bodyguard's Wife. Hitman Bodyguard. Man, Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. That's it. Uh, which is the sequel from the Hitman's Bodyguard. Oh my god. Um, and it's got Ryan Reynolds in and Samuel L. Jackson. And just what great people to have in a film. I'm a big fan of um, Ryan Reynolds. Who isn't though? Who, who, who in their right mind could look at that man and go, not a fan of you. I loved the Green Lantern film. I know everyone hates it, but I liked it because I like Green Lantern. So, suck it. Let's finish this beer. Not finish, but let's try. It's like 30 minutes and like a litre of, a, a of beer you guys are expecting me to drink. Well, you guys, just me. There's only expectations from me because I, in, until the episode's out, I'm the expectation. This episode might run on uh, on a little bit. So, let's talk about my sponsor for this episode. One of these three beers. If you work at one of these three beers, reach out to me. Because you're my sponsor and you owe me money now. 
Let's talk about them one at a time. Really try and sell that sponsorship money. Peroni. The beer. If you're Italian. No. Wait. Peroni. The beer for when you're eating pizza and you're at Pizza Express. Because it's the main beer they sell. Ambulance. Next one. Asahi. Because you're probably at a sushi restaurant. <laughs> Next one. <laughs> I am getting sponsored. The next one. Hogarden. Because I haven't finished it yet. No. Um, I actually don't know why I see Hogarden too often. I've seen it on tap at one pub. Um, let's just do Hogarden. Because <laughs> when you're... When you're... Belgiuming for a bit? No. Hogarden's a real hard one. Hogarden. For when there's hose in your garden. Done. Uh, so yeah, if you do actually work for Peroni, Asahi, or Hogarden, uh, please reach out to me. Um, I'm sure you'll find a way. Because I actually don't have a business email. <laughs> business email coming soon. Um, and I'm sponsored by them now. Let's put Let's put all three brands above me. All three brands right here. I speak for the brands. If you want, if you're one of these three brands and you want one of them removed or both of them removed, business email. Get at me. So that that brings us to the end of the sponsor part of the video. I'm glad. Um, I'm glad we all walked through that part unscathed. We're just getting sponsors out the wazoo, you know. Three beer sponsors or one, depending on what you see above me now. Um, if all three are above me, no one sponsored me. Actually, no. Maybe they're all friends. They're, I could be sponsored. If it says, if YouTube says, this video contains advertising content, then I've been sponsored. If it doesn't say that, probably not happened. I imagine my, like, average eight people who view these videos, none of which work at there, I don't think. If you do, though, remember, business email, coming soon. Reach out to me. I won't drink more than one of your beer in an episode, though. Because, oh, well, this episode's going long, though. But that's because of the sponsor. Thanks to today's sponsor, we get a longer episode. If you work for any of these, these labels, reach out to me. Because you made this happen. Literally. Um, I've lost my mind. I'm snapping. Who else can sponsor me? Let's look for more sponsors while we, uh, while we wait. Um... Yoda, because when you need someone who doesn't speak English, Yoda. Um. <laughs> no, no, no. That was funny in my head. It's not funny in real life. Um. Zippo, because when you need fire, I'm the flame. <laughs> Oh, I'm so dumb. Uh, <laughs> I've got it. I've got the one we need. Costa, because when you're going to be drinking this much beer, you're going to need me. See, the brand deals are just popping up. Let's just let's just throw a load of logos on the screen right now. This is going to take so long to edit. <laughs> just throw a load of logos on the screen, right? Any one of you, come at me. We'll, we'll get some sponsorships in. I think this is going to be great for the channel. I think this is going to be a really, really good PR stunt. I actually couldn't film earlier because um, there was someone doing their washing downstairs. And I'll just re recreate what was happening. It was really jostling my screen. It was very annoying. So I couldn't film. Um, well, of course, we're filming now. Um... I'm just stalling for time because I've still got about yay much. Um, any more sponsors? <laughs> um, Blue Yeti microphones, because when you need audio, they're there for you. Um, I've always actually had a Blue Yeti microphone. So if, if Blue do want to sponsor me, I'd happily have that. I used to have a silver one. Uh, and I had that for years, and then I sold it to a friend, 
when I moved up to London because I didn't have desk space for it. And he uses it for his music now. And then when I was here, I was like, what a dumb decision because I like having a separate mic to my headphones. So I bought another one, exactly the same, but in black. And I'm very happy with it because everything matches. Except my desk, which is white and gray. I should get black desk. Black desks, because when you have everything else black, match your desk with it. I know this is run on now. I know. I know. Um, and I know it's it's mostly yammering at this point, but I can he do it, Captain. I can he do it. God damn it, Jim. I'm an engineer, not a doctor. Well, it's the other way around, obviously. I'm a doctor, not an engineer. That's bones. But I'm also, god damn it, Jim, I'm sober, not an alcoholic. Kind of, maybe. Just drink. We're like one sip from freedom. So while I while I have that last sip, let me go on to the old podcast. And let me thank everyone who commented on it. Oh my god. It's so much alcohol. Okay, I need to go here. Comments. And today, we're going to have a, a good thank you to Ready Made Lobotomy, who actually, uh, it was her idea I did this episode. Um, and she said, when I saw the OD, and I was like, what? Has that always been there? Good to know I wasn't crazy. So that was actually in reference to the OD in the corner of all of the, well, not all of them, now all of the um, thumbnails. I replied to that. It's the little things. I'm glad you noticed. Then Nicholas Deschamps, my papa, commented, you should get a job as a red coat. I think he means one of the, like, um, the people who stand outside the Queen's Palace. Fair point. I was like, probably a little hard to get into at this point. And then, oh my god, I'm so dying. Ah, oh, I've just realised. So, uh, it, it tells me how long everyone's publicly subscribed for. That's cute. Um, and then we've got uh, one from G Samak, my boy, the absolute legend. Um, and he said, still waiting for my invite to the podcast. I did actually have a phone call with him after this. Uh, and he has had a formal invite now. So we will be hopefully doing something with him at some point. I've also planned to do one with uh, Lewis at some point. So uh, stay tuned. Anyway, let's take this last sip. Thank you for all of your support and love. Please like, subscribe, share. Um, if you've made it to this point, you're already doing fucking fantastic. But if if you're here and you don't know what else to do, like, subscribe, share, go on my other videos, have a good time, and have a good day. Thank you very much, everyone. And I, I bless you for making it this far. Bless your face. <laughs>